The truth is, if you choose your pieces carefully, you don't need an extensive collection. No, you don't. Learn from us. I'm about to tell you it all. Hi everybody and welcome back. Yes, if you, like me, are, you know, into curating your collection, having the perfect handbag collection, and it's nice and small and tight and neat, and you don't want any more headaches or any regrets in your life, you come to the right place. As we get into this, know that you are welcome and you're in the right place. Welcome back, everybody. It is fabulous to have you all here. We are getting near to Christmas. And I want to give out my shout out today to Ying Lin Lee. Hi Ying, how are you? Mwah! And my fragrance of today is none other than Portrait of a Lady by Dominique Ropian. This is a stunning, it's a strong one. Lots of Bulgarian rose in it. She's spicy. She has cloves and she has cinnamon. She is fruity also. She has oh, I just love it. raspberry and blackcurrant in there. And she has Patchouli, incense, sandalwood, she has musk, benzoin, and she has amber. She has all the good stuff. She's smoky, she's powdery, she's fruity, and she's very much a floral fragrance. Beautiful for a special occasion. Now, I wanted to talk to you about this today because I think if you listen to these, I think seven, eight points that I have, you're not gonna make many mistakes in your handbag choices, in curating your handbag collection, in getting the perfect collection for you, personal to you, individual and customized. Because we all know that we all have different needs, wants, variations, what fits in your lifestyle might not fit in my lifestyle and vice versa. So listen up because this is going to help you a lot. I have talked about it be before, but I have a lot of new subscribers and I really, really do think this is gonna help you going forward. If you don't want to have 25 or 30 handbags, who needs those anyway? We've talked about that one before, so let's not go there again. Today I'm gonna to help you to build your perfect small luxury bag collection. And the first point I wanted to talk about today was cost per wear. Some people, this is the main point, it's very important to them, and other people, not so much. They don't mind, you know, it depends on your budget, it depends on how much money you have, if you wanna leave your bag sitting in the wardrobe, but there are many reasons why people don't want to do that. For me, I definitely want to bring down the cost per wear and use all my handbags. I'm not a fan of my handbags sitting in my wardrobe, in my closet, collecting dust, doing nothing. That for me is just a no-no, an absolute no-no. So cost per wear for me is really, really important on my handbag selections and handbag choices. I don't believe in this kind of old fashioned, if you don't mind me saying thing of, I'm going to keep that for a special occasion. God forbid that special occasion might never come. Today is special. It's a special that we're here right now, right here, enjoying what we have and using it as much as we can. So for me, that's why these handbags are still in my collection. Some of them I use more than others, but I got rid of, say, the excess that just I don't use that were sitting there. It freed up money, cash, and headspace to buy what really, really works for me. So for example, uh, take my Chanel Jumbo. I never use that bag. I, I used it once. I used it once to actually make myself use it. I brought it for dinner. I found it quite cumbersome for me, for particularly for an evening. I sold it to one of my subscribers, gorgeous girl. I hope she's enjoying it. And you see, it depends on your lifestyle. So if you like to carry a lot, which I don't, well, then it's going to work for you because the jumbo is perfect. It was in caviar. It was beautiful. Fit so much. Umbrellas, diaries, all that kind of stuff. Things I do not carry because I m mostly drive everywhere. But if you're living in New York or somewhere, you might walk a lot and you need to carry more stuff. Just have a think. Write down, what do I do every day? How do I use my bags? It's just a few minutes out of your time that will honestly serve you for years and years to come. So I got rid of the jumbo and in place of that, what suits me better for size and for evening wear is the medium. Let me justify buying this bag and I'm delighted with my decision. The jumbo was in caviar and this one is in lambskin and this one just suits me. She's the kind of bag she can be casual and she can be dressy and that is my personality and my style and how I use my bags. So she suits me much better, as I said, whereas the jumbo didn't. Then another bag, which I just think is just amazing as far as, you know, my lifestyle and cost per wear is this one. Like she's just a workhorse of a bag. Like I grab her running up to the supermarket, doing errands, all that kind of stuff. She's quite casual. I'm not gonna be taking this bag for dinner. But if I did need to go for dinner and I was caught and I was out, that's fine too. That's fine, yeah, I would use this bag. Okay. 
So just have a think of how you use your bag, what you're doing day to day before you make any purchases. The next point I wanted to make was practicality. Practicality, again, is very important. This bag really ticks a lot of the points that I'm gonna be talking about today. Like number three, I'm gonna be talking about durability. And this bag, again, like it rains in Ireland. You know, we can't have a lot of vachetta unless you're going in the car or things like that. So even my pochette, my Matisse, that you know I absolutely love that bag, I still use this one more. Because I throw her around more, whereas I suppose I kind of baby the pochette Matisse a little bit more. Even though I have a twilly on her, she still has some fichetta. I love the bag, but this one is more, actually, I'll just even show you. I use it all the time. And inside, what have I got inside? Yeah, look, receipts, lists. That's everyday life for you. Right in there, all my lists. I just throw them in. So I have to clean out that bag because I just pick her up, run out the door, and off we go. So yes, you have to think of practicality. Like if, if you're going to think about, well, what your handbag is used for, and you, you go out and you buy a Jacquemus bag and you go, the little chickachee, Chikatito bag. Well, you're gonna go, God, what does that hold? A lipstick and a card. That's fine if you're on holidays and you know, it's not everyday running errands. It's not really a bag for that. So if you want to kind of use your bag every day, like even this bag, the Birkin 25, you know, people can't believe how small this is in real life. And she is actually, even when I, before I bought her, I looked at other people's, so I was like, God, yeah, when I actually got her myself, she's smaller, but this, bag for me just works perfectly again as you can see i've mints in there i have my louis vuitton little mini pochette and different things because i use her all the time and she's easy easy to get into that's why i just love her so much you can just literally put your hand in grab what you want and off you go i just wanted to actually give a mention out to organize my bag because they sent me this beautiful new they're doing new it's not sponsored or anything but in fairness to them they were very kind to send me this new bag organizers i haven't even opened her yet and they're thinner and they're made of like a microfiber lining and they sent me this for my Birkin, so I just wanted to show you. It's absolutely gorgeous. The material is much more luxurious. And I'll show you again when I actually put her into the bag. She's po two pockets on the outside there, and she has lots of different pockets and inserts on the inside one even for water feels beautiful so there you go if you've any interest in those i'll put a link down below but i just want to give them a shout out because thank you so much to organize my bag for sending me that i'm going to put it into my birkin and show you pictures later as i said you have to just think about your personal use of the bag you know if you prefer a lightweight bag if you don't mind if the bag is heavier all of these things have to be taken into account Number three, durability, as I already mentioned. Are you rough with your bags? Do you need, you know, scratch proof? Whether it's the Louis Vuitton canvas, again, scratch proof, rain proof, waterproof, lightweight. Whoa. Unbelievable bag, I have to say, especially with the black treated leather. So you need to ask yourself, you know, again, do I want the monogram? Do I want Demi and Ben? Do I want this? Do I want that? How is it going to work in my lifestyle day to day? It's all very fine. And we've all done this, you run into the shops and you're there and then the lights are beautiful and the bag is displayed absolutely gorgeous and you get carried away in the whole setup. And then you realize when you bring it home, that just does not fit into my life. Oh God, what have I done? <laughs> Big mistake. Like there's days I'm going to go for this bag over my classic flap. But again, I want to be able to use my bags a lot. Case in point. This beauty, I absolutely adore this bag. I have told you about her before. Now, I justified holding on to her because look, at, I got rid of my jumbo. I've got rid of a couple of Chanel bags, clutch on chain, I got rid of as well. And I said, look, I know I don't use this one a lot and I would really only use her for an occasion. But at this stage in my handbag collection, she's pretty much the only bag that I have like that. So I think that allows me to keep one and I just absolutely love her. I think she's doughty. I think she's something you can just take for dinner. You don't have to just wait for a wedding or something like that. But I do not use this bag. I really don't use her a lot. And I want to use her more because I tend to find, I find myself grabbing, if I'm going for dinners and things, I'll go for my Birkin 25, I'll go for my classic flap, or even this bag here, because oh my God, this one, as you know, I've raved about her. She just goes from day to evening. So she's, if you're in town, you're out shopping, you're caught and you're like, oh, well, we go for dinner. She serves the purpose. She's also quite durable. If I got caught in the rain, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like to, but if I did get caught in the rain, especially with the black, I wouldn't worry as much and she is in the gold skin, which I think is like a little bit of a protected kind of a layer over. I just absolutely love this bag. As you can see, I use her pretty much things in all my bags. I use her all the time as well. 
and the convenience of the phone in the back, the comfortable, how comfortable this bag is. Some people were asking me before actually about the chains, were they heavy? I don't find them heavy, but then I'm only, you know, I'm getting out of the car, walking around town for maybe an hour or so, and that's it. I just find them, I mean, it has the leather brake at the top as well. I love this bag, and for me, she, cost per wear is unreal. She is very practical and she's quite durable. She looks just as good as the day that I bought her. I had the Celine box bag in the small size and first of all, it wasn't the right size for me. It just wasn't, it was too small and then too boxy. A beautiful bag, but it was box leather and so it would have been easy to scratch. And I said, right, let's just let this bag go. Let's be practical about this. Make room, as I said, for other bags that I'm gonna use more because the stress of worrying about getting a nail mark on that bag was just like, Oh. And on the box leather, it's very, very obvious. Whereas if you get a mark on other bags and different materials, it may not be as obvious. So there's just things to think about, you know, as well. Some people like to buy the box leather, maybe because of the history or the story behind it. And some people like to buy new and things like that. So it depends on where you're at. The next point is to have uh, your handbag go with your wardrobe, a cohesive kind of wardrobe. There is no point in you getting a bag that is whether it be blue or green or red or whatever color that you absolutely never wear even if somebody is saying to you oh look you've lots and lots of black handbags just go for a color i did that i have the red vintage chanel which i absolutely love but i very very i think i've brought her out once i don't wear a lot of red even though you could wear that with you know black and it would pop lovely i'm going to keep her i'm definitely going to use her i keep saying that but you have to think about your wardrobe everything behind me here goes unbelievably with my wardrobe like this just goes with everything this will go with white blue black pink like un unreal the color of that togo and of course the louis vuitton goes beautifully with everything of course your black bags go with everything color wise i'm talking about and there are very important points to consider because you don't want to find yourself kind of going, I'm very restricted with that handbag. I can only wear her with this outfit and I can only wear her on that occasion. You just don't want to find yourself in that situation because it's just a nightmare. It's like you're, you're looking at your bag going, you're admiring it. Oh, just that's, that's it, like throwing sugar at it. You're beautiful, like my jumbo, stunning but I just couldn't wear the bag. So we gotta be real here. And I think you and I deserve more with your hard earned cash. You deserve to have the perfect handbag collection. You deserve to put that little bit of work in where you're not burdening yourself with having to resell the bags. Any girl, any YouTuber on here, any Lux kind of handbag collector will tell you it's a nightmare to have to sell handbags. It's just a hassle. You're up and down to the post office, everything that goes with it. So if you follow these points, you really will benefit from the little bit of research before you jump into throwing your thousands at something, you know? Now, my number six point is resale value. This is not hugely important to everybody. Again, depends on your cash flow, on your income and all of the above. This will actually tell you how much you love the bag. If, for example, you go onto the resale market, onto Vestier, onto Fashion File, onto any of those websites when you're doing a little bit of research to find out how much they're going for on the resale value, that is a very important tip very very important because the likes of the lady dior my friends does not hold her value and as you know i bought another one the wicker basket one which i love brand new and a lot of these bags like this one here i think they're probably going for two and a half three thousand euro now in the resale so they don't hold their value so maybe you want to buy your lady dior on the resale market you can get them never worn with the tags on get them in excellent condition again as i said do the research ask questions i have lots of people asking me questions on instagram i'll always try and i might be a few days late because i've much more subscribers now thank you so much but i'll always get back to you at some point when i have a free hour and i sit down and i answer people because i think you deserve that for giving me your time that's the least i can do we appreciate your help, thank you so much. So just have a think about that now. It might be important for you to have a brand new bag, as I said before, or maybe you wanna get a vintage bag and have the story behind it. Again, it's personal, but you know what you like. So think about that, because it might put you off. If you go to yourself, well, I'm gonna drop five grand on that bag now, and it's only gonna be worth three. Maybe you won't want the bag after that. Maybe it will just give you that kind of kick you needed to go, you don't want it actually that bad. You really don't want it that bad. I mean, at the end of the day, it's nice to get a little bit of your money back, you know, recoup a little bit, 
life changes all the time. This is the other thing. Think about, you know, one constant in life, as I always tell my kids, is change. Your lifestyle might, might change and therefore a handbag that you have bought maybe a year ago just mightn't serve you anymore. Or maybe it just doesn't bring you joy anymore. Or maybe you've just found out it just doesn't work for you and you go to sell it and you go, oh my God, I've just lost two grand on that bag. Have a think about that one. It's important it'll save you a lot of headaches and heartaches at the same time. And the last point I would say to you is listen to your gut. I'm always gonna say this to people because we are influenced everywhere in this life. We're influenced by YouTube and social media. We're influenced by everything. Anybody else that has the bag, our friends that might say, Viv, don't buy that black bag. You've got seven black bags, buy a different color. Then I go, oh yeah, 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 you're right. Actually, you're right. Then I go and buy the blue bag or the green bag or the orange bag or whatever. So that just doesn't go with my wardrobe or that I'm never gonna wear. So listen to your gut. It's there for a reason. It's always there knocking going, hello, hello. And it's there to tell you what sometimes not to buy. Like sometimes we buy just for the fear of missing out if something is very sought after. And often think to yourself, you know, if you have something in mind and then you're swayed, like say you want the Birkin 25 and you go in store and oh my God, the, the, the 30 and the exact color, the exact hardware, exact everything, but it's the 30. And then you go, oh yeah, okay, I'll go for that because I know it's hard and I'll accept that. Just think of the opportunity cost that you're doing to yourself. So now you're gonna spend that money in the bag that you didn't really want in the first place, just in case you're gonna miss out. And then you've lost the opportunity and the cash to that you had for the actual bag that you wanted. So just wait, don't let yourself jump. Just hold on, listen to yourself for a minute, just take a breath and you are giving yourself that chance and just waiting and putting your hard earned cash exactly where you wanted to put it. I mean, it's not easy to come by this cash in the first place. So I hope all those tips will and have helped you and that you build your perfect small luxury collection that you're going to enjoy, that is gonna be more stress-free, there's no burdens of having to resell, and the benefits of having less and not having to maintain, mind, manage, insure, and all the rest, enjoy that and the freedom of it, and let me know how you get on. Until next time, be kind, be safe, be compassionate. Love you lots. Mwah.